สวัสดีค่ะ Hello everyone Welcome to หัวหิน My name is Cherry I will be your host to show you the new normal of happiness in หัวหินหัวหิน is my hometown so I will show you the places of interest in หัวหิน and how it has changed after the COVID-19 pandemic It's called the new normal of happiness at Hua Hin Thai Authentic Beach. We shall start from the landmark of Hua Hin, Hua Hin Railway Station. Right now, the situation in Thailand has improved, but there are still some rules to follow. The new normal here is everyone must wear a face mask outside home, be temperature checked, sanitized hands, check in via security platform before entering anywhere, and maintain social distancing at all times. An appointment with my guest here, Miss Soraya Hong s h u n the director of Tourism Authority of Thailand, r a j o p i k a n Office. Could you tell us about Hua Hin Railway Station? Hua Hin Railway Station is one of the most beautiful railway station in Thailand and was opened in 1911. Since then, it became the main port of entry for visitors to Hua Hin. This railway station has been voted as the best top 10. Attractions in Thailand by People's Choice Award from China, and the main attraction is on our right-hand side. We can take a look at that the uh, Pramung Phut k l a u Pavilion. This pavilion was originally built by King Rama the Sixth at s n a m c h a n Palace, and later in 1968, it was reconstructed here as the pavilion for the Royal Train Platform for His Majesty the King. Just across the railroad, there is a golf course called Royal Hua Hin Golf Course. Which is the oldest 18-hole golf course in Thailand, and not far from this station, you will see Hua Hin Beach. Now we reach Hua Hin Beach. This is the first beach resort of Thailand. The royal family and most of elite class people have their second home in Hua Hin. Nowadays, it's still the popular weekend destination for people from Bangkok and nearby area. Activity that tourists like to do on the beach when they come to Hua Hin is horseback riding. That's why Hua Hin branding has the horse in it. Hua Hin also has a ferry terminal that links Hua Hin with Pattaya at Hua Don Beach in Khao Ta Kiap. Khao Ta Kiap area gives you a sensational view of beach and mountains. Good for relaxation. Apart from white sandy beach and clear water, good for swimming. Hua Hin is also a well-known destination for golfers. Today we will visit the international award-winning golf court in Hua Hin, which is here, Ban Yan Golf Club, Hua Hin. We have Mr. Stacy Walton, the general manager of Ban Yan Golf Club, Hua Hin. So we have heard that Ban Yan won quite a few international awards last year. Could you please tell us about that? Yes, um, uh, Ban Yan Golf Club was recognised as the best golf course in Thailand mm -hmm. um, at the Asia Pacific Awards. And we also won the best golf club experience in Asia Pacific. Something we're very proud of. Can you tell us about services that you have access for the new normal? Yeah, we had to adjust to reopen during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic to mm -hmm. make it safe for our golfers, our visitors. Mm -hmm. So our safety protocols were put in place. At Tamari Market, a popular night market in Hua Hin, we have Mr. m e t i Chok s u c h a t the owner of the market. Please tell us what is the new normal of happiness at the Tamari Market. Well, the new normal of happiness at Tamari Market concerns health and safety with the sanitary standard of practice that we introduced into the market. Starting from the beginning point at the checkpoint, we have the temperature check, we have hand sanitizer, and we have the application to detect the number of visitors. And at the shop, you can see the vendors. They wear masks, they wear hats, and they wear gloves. And they promote the QR payment for the non-cash payment. And all you can see is hand sanitizer all over the market. Seating and the table be separate. For the physical distancing, at least one meter, to conform to the rule and standard, so we can ensure that people come with comfort of mind, the happiness with the comfort of mind for the safety and sanitary standard. There is also s i k i d a Market, another weekend market famous for food, arts, and crafts with creative ideas. Hua Hin Night Market is another one, which is open every day on Hua Hin 72 Road. Let's experience the new normal of happiness at Hua Hin Thai Authentic Beach. We look forward to seeing you here in amazing Thailand.
สวัสดีค่ะ Good afternoon everyone in Thailand and good day to all of our friends and partners around the world. Welcome to today's t h g webinar by Tourism Authority of Thailand. And I am Piria t a n g n a m r o n g t h a m from the Tourism Authority of Thailand Head Office, and I be your host throughout this two-hour session. And on behalf of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, I would like to thank you for your interest to attend this special webinar session entitled "Amazing Thailand Destination Updates." In this session, we will share our strategic approach amid the COVID-19 situation and provide market situation and readiness updates on major Thai tourist destinations: Phuket, Khao Lak, Panga, Krabi, Samui, Hua Hin, Pattaya, and Chonburi, Chiang Mai, and Bangkok. With our expert travel panelists from each destination. Importantly, we will look at whether each destination is ready for reopening, deep dive into the new norms and opportunities for the future of our industry, and how we can bounce back smoothly together. And since we have many experts today from eight destinations with us, and so we have divided today's discussion into two parts. The first hour will meet experts from Chiang Mai in the north, Bangkok, our capital city, Pattaya, c h o n b u r i on the east coast, and then Phuket, a very popular destination with high room capacity in the south of Thailand. And the second half of the session. From um, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Bangkok time, we'll meet experts from the southern provinces of Thailand, also known as the Beach This Paradise Destination of Thailand, Hua Hin, a peaceful beach town in northern south, a short drive away from Bangkok, Phang Nga, where Khao Lak is located, a n e i b o r province of Phuket, Krabi, which is famed for its breath. Taking cask landscapes and island hopping activities, and lastly, Samui, the largest island in the Gulf of Thailand. And just a little housekeeping before we get started. This is important as we have 1,500 attendees with us today from over 30 countries across the world. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box on notebook or PC. The Q&A icon is on the left. And if you're joining on mobile phone, the icon is on top of the screen. You can also vote for questions that you like in the Q and A box. And on the bottom right of the screen, there's a chat box where you can click join the chat to chat with other webinar participants. Or if you experience any difficulties during the live presentation, you can communicate with our admin team here. And just a little. Little reminder that what's written in the chat box will not be shown to our speakers. So if you have any questions for our speakers, be sure you put them into the Q and A box. And now, everyone, please allow me to introduce our first set of speakers of the first hour today. Our Chiang Mai representative expert, Kun La e t Bung Si Thong. สวัสดีค่ะคุณละเอียด is the president of Thailand Hotel Association Northern Chapter and general manager of Ratilana Riverside Spa Resort in Chiang Mai. Our Bangkok representative expert, please welcome คุณประชุมตันติประสุสุขสวัสดีค่ะคุณประชุมคุณประชุมวิสวิสเปรสเซนต์ของไทยแลนด์อินเซนทีฟและคอนเวนชั่นแอสโซเชชันแอสโซแอสเวิสเปรสเซนต์อินเซลส์ของดูซิทโฮเทลส์และรีสอร์ทส์ของท่านสเปกเกอร์ของเดอะเฟรชฮาร์ฟของเดอะเซสชั่นจากพัทยาชนบุรีและพัทยาชนบุรีรีเปรสเซนต์ทีฟเอ็กซ์เพรสคุณธเนศสุพรสหัสรังสีสวัสดีค่ะคุณธเนศคุณธเนศเป็นแอคทิ้งเพรสเซนต์ของทุริสม์คาวซูของชนบุรีพรอวินซ์และกรุ๊ปเอ็กซ์เซคิวทีฟดีเรคเตอร์ของซันชัยโฮเทลส์และรีสอร์ทในพัทยาและท้ายท้ายสเปกเกอร์ของวันนี้คือจากภูเก็ตคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามขอให้คุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตงามสวัสดีค่ะคุณภูมิกิตรักแตง And today's discussion and presentation topics will include overall current tourism situation and updates in each destination, such as updates on airport operating airlines, flight options, what products and services are available or open now, and the recovery plan for each destination, covering reopening and latest updates about the travel regulations being implemented. 
and critically a short update on almost 1,000 hospitality partners from hotels, resorts, shopping malls, wellness centers, travel agencies, restaurants, and attractions who have received the amazing Thailand Safety and Health Administration or SHA certificates. For short, for those of you who don't know, I've never heard of it, it's the certificate project designed to elevate the Thai tourism industry, disease prevention, sanitation, and safety standards to reduce the risk and prevent spread of the COVID-19. And TAT has been working together with the Ministry of Public Health, Ministry of Tourism and Sports, and many other partners to ensure this program is robust and effective in developing confidence among international and domestic tourists. And for the latest updates, visit thailandshah.tourismthailand.org. In summary, there will be 40 minutes of presentations and discussions in the first half by our first travel expert panel from four destinations and 15 minutes at the end for the Q&A. And now without further ado, we will turn the time over to our first speaker. May I start with the North, Chiang Mai. Please welcome Kun La Yet, the President of Thailand Hotel Association Northern Chapter and the General Manager of Ratik Lana Riverside Spa Resort in Chiang Mai. Kun La Yet, please, the floor is yours. Sadiqa. So good morning or even good afternoon to everyone. It's my pleasure to have a chance sharing the update information about Chiang Mai City. Uh, as you may have known that Chiang Mai is the second city from Bangkok and it's very uh, named to be the Rose of the North. And we have more than 2,000 hotels and more than 1,000 restaurants throughout the city. And now after the pandemic of COVID, we have no choice to close temporary as there is no business as the pandemic of the COVID. So we try to change our life to reopen the business within uh, next month. So uh, as you may have heard that Thailand is one of the second of the best in the world on going COVID-19 recovery. So as the same Chiang Mai is, uh, release at the fourth step of being uh, protective from, from the situation of COVID. So we get start with the clip video that I have shown you how we've been to imply our new normal life with the video. Please enjoy.
So as you might have seen the product of Chiang Mai city. So Chiang Mai is more ecotourism, soft ecotourism, and we have products with this show our lifestyle identity, showing the cultures, tradition, festivals into our normal life. So we have products of crafting, temples, good for shopping, authentic foods, and very affordable. That is why now I would like to invite you to review for your plan to next visit into Thailand after the pandemic or after everyone has settled with our normal life. So the well-being of our people is the key message. That's why now we are recording as uh, zero cases throughout Thailand, more, more over than three weeks. And then everyone in the city are remind, are remind to continue to adhere the safety health throughout the city to the practice to protect ourselves and our people. So as Tourism Authority of Thailand is the key leader to implement safety health administration guide. So we expect to resume, to reopen our tourism industry business gradually. So next month, it's about 30% of our related concern business in the tourism to reopen their business. Maybe during the first few months, the next few months, we're going to restart for our in-house or in the domestic business. That's why I would like to share you that the implementation for the safety and health are very much concerned. So I would like to invite that or to ensure you that why you should consider Chiang Mai City as your priority for your next visit. Because of our unique selling points. And the very much concern is because Chiang Mai is very easy to access. We have international airports which could connect with ASEAN countries, both domestic and international arrivals. So please consider to be back to Thailand or Chiang Mai city for your next visit. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing us um, information on and updates of the Chiang Mai city and the ways of life showing identity of cultures and traditions that is really rich in Chiang Mai. And next, would you please welcome our Bangkok, the City of Angels market expert, Kun Prachum Tanti Prasasuk. Kun Prachum, Sadika. Um, good morning, good afternoon, uh, and good evening to some countries, okay, uh, to every one of you who I consider friends of Thailand. Without you, we will not be able to reach the number of tourists that we have today to Thailand. Uh, I also thank you, Tourism Authority of Thailand, for giving me this opportunity to talk about my beloved city, which is Bangkok, the city of angels. Uh, where I belong, and I believe that I, I was born and, and raised uh, and made here in Bangkok as well. All right, let, let's go to uh, the topic that I, I, I have uh, prepared for you because of the time constraint. Uh, I, I, I will go quite fast, so please uh, allow me to run through. And if you have any question, as Kunrung said, please type and we will be able to chat in the box or, or answer to your question later on. Uh, I think we all uh, have been through this difficult time together. Um, all hospitality related to the travel industry and also other industry in the world uh, around the globe has faced unprecedented challenge in dealing with the social and economic impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. That is no doubt about it. Right? So uh, we, we have, especially in the travel industry, we have been hit so hard 
because uh, travel is something that it is not really uh, a necessary thing sometimes in, in your life, okay? Um, people have a choice whether you want to travel or not, and especially with the new technology that's coming today, you have virtual meetings now. I know I can see you all over the world. I believe that I have someone from China, from Japan, from Europe listen to our session today, which I thank you very much for your valuable time. Okay, now I'm, I have a few slides that I would like to show you today. Um, oops, um, share the screen, okay. Okay, all right. I have some statistics here to show you, but not so much, okay? I'm not gonna talk about numbers and everything because you already know number of tourists coming to Thailand and whatever you see in that number of tourists coming to Thailand, about 30% to 40% come to, to Bangkok before they go to the north, beautiful Chiang Mai, or you know, to enjoy the beach, beautiful beach in the southern part of Thailand. Uh, but after the COVID-19, what I would like to share with you is in Bangkok, the only the first and the second quarter alone, all the hotels, this is from the Harvard, uh, they do this uh, research and they said, the occupancy for the first and the second quarter expect to drop by 50% and will be more in the third quarter. Okay, even though we see a good sign because the already started to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, uh, at ease on the, some restriction, but again, you know, people still doesn't have much confidence to travel. So uh, we believe that in the third quarter, the occupancy will not be better than the second quarter. Actually, uh, they expect about 60 to 65% drop as compared to last year. Okay, now uh, this page I, I summarized from, uh, by myself from the conversation that I have with uh, government with private sectors and my friends and colleagues in the industry. Now everybody prepare for the quick win, okay? And in order to have a quick win, um, this is not only the hotels, but including travel agents and everything related to the travel industry. There are eight things that I summarize here today. Number one is balanced market segmentation and nationality mix, okay? In the past, maybe in some hotels or in some province, we will only have what well, we majority will be Chinese uh, tourists or some hotels who said, oh, I have a lot of European guests. But with the lessons that we learned after COVID-19, we have to try to balance our market segmentation and nationality mix well. Number two is to lift up the standard of the service and facilities, okay, or to ele uh, e elevate the service standard and facility. What do I mean by that? When the covid uh, 19 is over or when we recover, we got to make sure that we are ready. And I think hotels, travel agents, DMCs, they're all working on this. Later on, I will tell you uh, how I come up with this quick win on the, the in, in terms of standard and facilities. Number three is making use of the technology to ensure guest convenience and hygiene standard. Now it's a world of technology we cannot deny. For those of you or including me whose phobia to technology, unfortunately we have to learn and how to cope with it, okay? For example, I'll tell you, nobody wants to touch a banknote anymore. If they can choose, they would want to touch a banknote. Now we have to be ready for this mobile payment, you know, Ali, Alibaba or whatever, okay? But if, if they don't have this app, maybe you want to transfer the money direct from your bank account to that shop's account. You don't want to touch a bank. No, that's all about technology. When you go to the restaurants, you might not want to touch a menu anymore, right? So they have a QR code, you, you use your mobile phone and then you have the menu show on your screen. That is all about technology. Number four is wellness and holistic experience. Now people are more health conscious, they look into the way of life, they want to live healthy life. So we, everyone is trying to look into from the different angles, how are we gonna lift up or how are we gonna apply the wellness program and holistic experience into the product? Adding value and experience is no doubt. People are looking for value for money even more than what it used to be. Most of all, not only the value, but the experience. What do I get when I buy the product from you? Okay, so I will take you through that experience later. Number six is focus on sustainability. It's even more important than ever. 
we learn the lessons during the COVID-19. Look at the blue sky that we have. Look at the beach in the southern part of Thailand. Even in Hua Hin, I was there last week. It's beautiful. I never seen such a blue color in the ocean in Hua Hin like that before for the past, I would say, 15 years. It's now so beautiful. And I saw a lot of beautiful photos that my friends sent from Phuket and Gribi. It's incredible. It's beautiful. So sustainability is something that we have to look at. Human resources management, everyone is now looking into, they have time, they're looking back into the organization and see if we can uh, uh, shuffle some uh, position, can we lean our organization a little bit in order to save the expenses, but at the same time increase productivities. Last but not least, the cooperation among government and private sectors. I have to give gold medals to Ministry of Public Health of doing a good job during the, the pandemic. We all have the same message every day. We have the uh, good looking doctors, you know, with a very positive message that they send out every day, encourage us to fight over this difficult situation. And that is a single message for all Thai people. And that's help building the confidence to the visitors to Bangkok and to Thailand. Okay, these are the quick wins that uh, we Thai people are working on. I'm not talking only for Bangkok, but the whole of Thailand. Now, uh, the reasons why the tourists should come back to Thailand and to Bangkok City of Angels. When you come to Thailand, Thailand, Bangkok is still a gateway to other destination, right? People still want to come shopping, eating, enjoy life for a couple of days or three or four days before they go to the beach or before they discover uh, the northern part of Thailand. Now, I said the reasons why people want to come back to Thailand and to Bangkok is because we are beautiful from inside out and outside in. Okay, you're probably wondering what, what is she talking about? Beautiful from inside out and outside in. Let me take you through. Number one, outside in. Let me start with outside in before we go to inside out. Okay, the outside in, what do I mean by outside in? It means how the people look at us, look at Thai people, how the tourists looking at us from outside in, okay? What they, are, what, what, what they have seen and what they are going to see when they come and visit Thailand, okay? Number one is safety and hygiene standard, okay? Obviously, you, you, you know, in the past, we, we, we take it easy, never mind, you know, Thai, we are so easy, never mind, my pen drive, whether we wash our hands or not, it's okay. But now we are more health conscious. We, 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 we take into much consideration when it comes to hygiene. So Tourism Authority of Thailand has come up with a great initiative to have SHA together with Ministry of Public Health and uh, Thai Hotel Association, uh, TICA, TSEP, and all the related uh, organization concerned come up with this SHA, which is great, okay? So this, um, uh, uh, the slide that I show you are uh, the place where tourists will use the service, not only the tourists or Thai people, we use the service in these uh, uh, places and TH, uh, T, TAT would like to make sure that these places meet the criteria of the hygiene standard, okay? Which is well recognized. Now, if you're talking to uh, the guests or even some travel agent or even OTA, when they call me, they're asking, by the way, does your hotel has SHA? They want it to be shown in, the, in this SHA logo next to your hotel's photos. Okay, So that's hotel, restaurants, transportation, travel agent, health and beauty, department store, recreation activities, souvenir shop, sport for tourism, activities, meeting theater, entertainment, and so on and so forth. So, on the other words, the Tourism Authority of Thailand is trying to build the confidence. When the tourists come back, they have to feel confident that they're safe when they spend a few days or a few weeks here with us in Thailand. Okay? And at the same time, Bangkok Metropolitans, okay, they come up with a measure to prevent the spread of the coronavirus disease, which is kind of a little manual for us to, to follow. It's very easy. What I highlight in the red color that you see on the screen here is something very simple, which everybody can apply. 
whoever run the business in Thailand related to the tourism industry, they already follow this. For example, number one, frequently clean and high touch surface. This is something very common. Number two is that we all wear masks. I also have a mask here. You know, everywhere I go, I will have the mask. Okay. And it's always matched with my outfit. Number three is hand wash station, soap or alcohol based hand sanitizer gel and disinfectants. Okay. So you, if you go to a BTS station, if you go to restaurants, if you go to the shopping mall, you see this all over the place. And ladies and gentlemen, it's free of charge. You can take it as much as you want to. And some of them, I saw that they have a small little bottle and put it in the bottle and put it back into the handbag. It is okay too. Thai people, we are very generous. Okay, so number four is apply social distancing. Okay, we are all health conscious and we are uh, fully aware that, you know, during this uh, pandemic, we should keep distance, you know, not that we don't love you anymore, but to be on the safe side, we keep distance, okay? Uh, for example, if you go to the meeting room, TSEP has come up with a, a very, very good manual. They even tell you what's the distance between one seat to the other seat. It should be at least one meter. And in one square meter, you can have how many persons. That measurement has already been in place, okay? So these kind of things, you know, I'm not going to take you through all the manual, but I just want you to make sure that you can stay with us or, or be with us with confidence when you come to Thailand. The other thing that I think it, it's a great at the initiative from Ministry of Public Health is Thai Shana. Thai is mean Kon Thai or Thailand. Shana means win, okay? We, we will win over this situation together if we have this app called Thai Shana in your mobile phone. You can download it and then when you, when you go to uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, they will have this available for you to screen and then you show that you already check in into that restaurant or in the hotel and then uh, when, if there is anything happen, they can follow you if whether you are in that restaurant in that particular time. So that assure you that we have this app and the photos on the left hand side, that is the first day that the shopping mall called Siam Paragon open. You see, we know how to keep this then we are wearing masks and we scan Thai Shana before we get into the department store. Okay. Now, not only the standard and hygiene, beautiful from outside in is fascinating. Thailand has everything. And also Bangkok, whatever you want to do, if you like shopping, if you like sightseeing, it's, it's a fascinating destination. Uh, if you if you want to uh, be alone quietly somewhere, you know, if you look at the photo on the right corner upright, you see the two little boys, you know, fishing. This kind of thing you don't see much in any other countries, but you believe me or not, this is only half an hour away from Bangkok. The photos that you see on the right down below, that's Chatuchak Market at night time. Now they open at night time after 6 p.m. That's how it's look. Isn't it fascinating? If you want to shop, you shop until you drop. We open until 10 o'clock and we also have midnight sales. Can you imagine at midnight you can go out and shopping? So it is really a fascinating destination. Affordability. When I say affordability, you find an accommodation okay, from 150 baht a night until 150,000 bahts a night here in Bangkok. If you like to be in a homestay, if you want to be with Airbnb, if you want to be in a boutique hotel somewhere in Chinatown or along the river, it's all there for you. Okay, so it's really your choice. Number four is, of course, you know, eating cuisines. Okay, Thailand has everything when it's come to eating. You know, we love eating. Thailand is is not not many countries in the world that when you feel hungry at three o'clock in the morning you still can go out and eat you know that apparently i found out from google that in thailand there is a tour whereby you can go and dining with tuk-tuk drivers if you feel hungry you pay tuk-tuk i don't know uh if i'm not wrong it's like 400 baht take you around bangkok for eating tours or you can be on motorbike they have a grab you know like you can be on the bike and then say, I want to be with you for five hours. You take me around Bangkok for eating. They take you to everywhere that you want to eat. Or you can be in by boat. You can travel by boat and try all the restaurants along the river. 
So you see, when it's come to eating, it, we, we have it all. Accessibility, you talk about airport, we have two airports in Bangkok, the new highway, the railway station, and now the, with Lam Shabang uh, Seaport, which is uh, uh, close to Pattaya, it's only one and a half hours drive to Bangkok. Ex easy accessibility is the key to success. I saw so many destinations in the world that is so beautiful, but without the easy accessibility, I think uh, that would be an obstacle to promote the destination. Number six outside in is the segment. Thailand has, or Bangkok has, a lot of market segmentation. It depends on your purpose of your visit. If you want to come here for uh, medical tourism, you want to, to, to uh, be on the sport program, you want, you, are you the photographers and, and you have special interest on histories and culture, or you like uh, the performance, you know, all kind of segmentation, every segmentation, we are there to serve you here in Bangkok. Okay, that's beautiful from outside in. That's the reason why you should come back to Thailand and to Bangkok. But beautiful from inside out, what do I mean by that? Beautiful from inside out, it's all about caring and sharing. It's all about Thai people. This is the reasons why people keep coming back. And I think this is a very good reason why tourists should come back to Thailand again. Look at this. This is a true story that I would like to share with you during the COVID-19. There are a lot of tourists that cannot go back home during the COVID-19 because of the flight cancellation or because for several reasons they cannot go back home and they stuck here. Some can't afford themselves. Some said, well, you know, I have only the last uh, 500 euro left and, and, and that's all I have and I don't know how long I'm going to have to be here. These are the photos of the true story that happened in Bangkok that when the tourists feel hungry, we are there with you. We will never leave you alone. You will always have place to sleep. You will always have food to eat. I think the first photo on the left-hand side, it's in Koh Samui. And, and Kuntam later on who will be in this session will explain to you what happened to this family. The whole family has been living in a small little hut by the beach. And Thai people will go and share with them foods and drinks. And they really enjoy. They said this is the best holiday ever for, for my families. And the top one, uh, I think uh, the top left is in Bangkok. And the, the one, the two on the right uh, here is in Phuket. Welcome for all genders because we respect the equality. This is another beauty of Thai people. Regardless of nationality, regardless of your gender, regardless of your age, you all welcome. We, we are together as one. We want you to have fun, we want you to have joy, and we want you to have memorable experience when you come to Thailand. Another inside out is sincere and genuine of Thai people. This will impress the visitors who come to Thailand. I don't know if you follow the news, the two ladies on the right corner here, the Japanese ladies who lost the purse and the passport. Finally, they've got it back from one of the guys who was working, I think, at the airport or something, and they returned the money and everything to the Japanese tourists. So they were so happy. They said, if it's happened in anywhere in the world, they might not get this back. Right? So this is the genuine and, and, and the sincerity of Thai people. Another insight out is for those who need help. During the COVID-19, a lot of people losing their job, okay? And some of them were asked to be on leave without pay, and some of them, you know, who work for the day and live for the day, they have no income, you know? We learn how to share since we were young, and we will, ne we will never leave our people behind. We share the food for those who need help during the COVID-19. And this is the project that I love the most. It's called Sharing Pantry. Next time when you come to Thailand, bring something along with you. We have this pantry everywhere in every province and almost every corner of the cities. It's called Sharing Pantries. If you have some leftover, uh, not leftover, unused things that you said, well, you know, perhaps we can share this happiness with others. You can put it in this pantry or empty cabinet 
uh, the photos in the middle, you see the clothes that's hanging. It used to be a telephone box that belongs to telephone authority and we don't use it anymore. So they use it as a pantry for sharing. So people hang the clothes that they don't use it anymore in that pantry. So people who need it, who in need, they come and pick it up. And I myself, regularly, I bought the food from the supermarket and put it in the pantry for those who need help. Another thing that we have done, and I, I also very proud of all of, of the restaurants and hotels that joined in this, is they cook the food for the heroes. When I, when I said heroes, it's frontline medical staff and related organization that during the COVID-19, you know, the doctor works around the clock, the nurse and everyone work around the clock to help the patient, to look after the patient. And of course, we want to show them that we appreciate what they have done so we, we deliver the food to them, okay? And last but not least, the inside out is, you know, we have volunteers over one mil, uh, to cover over one million villages, have volunteer around the country. These people going out in the small village, in the rural, tell people about hygiene, teaching them how to live their life healthy in order to stop spreading the virus. And that's helped a lot. This program has been recognized by the WHO. Okay, so that's million thanks to all of them. And when you come to Thailand, you will always meeting new friends and impressed with our service. Okay, so this is something that it's the beauty from inside out of the Thai people. And I think you would have agreed with me that these are the reasons why you should come back to Thailand and to Bangkok and to meet with your friends here in Thailand again. You will never be left alone, no matter how, right? So uh, because I'm also uh, uh, working uh, with uh, TICA, I'm sitting as a, a vice president for TICA Thailand Incentive Convention Association. And also I'm working closely with TZEP to promote MICE. You know, uh, TAT allow me to f spend a few minutes talking about MICE after COVID what are we going to do to get my business coming back to Thailand again? Again, I want to touch base on the hygiene standard. TSEP has working closely with uh, uh, Ministry of Public Health, with TICA, with TEA, working on a manual whereby all the hotels and DMCs uh, can and, and other like restaurants can follow in terms of my hygiene standard. Okay, so uh, this is not only for meetings but for convention and for incentive as well. So they have, I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to read to you every single page, but it has from the pre-event to post-event, you know, I'm go quickly, but if you want to have this slide, by all means, you let me know. I'll be more than happy to share all this with you, okay? Bear with me a second. So I'm going to run through this one quickly. This is for incentive. You see the pre-event. If we have including staff training, what I'm going to do with all the activities, with transfer, how you register your guests before the meeting and after the meeting, how to serve coffee break, how to serve lunch. Okay, so these are the things that has been covered. Okay, this is giving the event. Bear with me a few seconds. I go quickly. I'm sorry if I go too fast, but they only give me 10 minutes to cover all this uh, topic. I wish I would have more than 10 minutes. Okay. So apart from that, we also try to elevate our standard, okay, lift up the standard of the service and facilities. These have come up with a great initiative on meeting venue standard, Thailand meeting venue standard. There's a criteria that we as a venue will have to meet in terms of cleanliness, hygiene, standard of the equipment, not only the, the hygiene, but the standard of equipment, standard of your uh, uh, meeting facilities, standard of your kitchen and everything. So once you meet this criteria and they have an inspe uh, inspectors to go and visit your hotels or venues and, and ensure that you, you are certified before they give you a, a plate and they put it right in, you can put it in, uh, I mean, we put it in front of our meeting rooms so that when the organizer and when you come and visit all oh, this venue, you know that, well, okay, this venue already certified as a Thailand meeting venue standard. 
Okay, and next step is the ASEAN meeting venue standard. This has been accepted by all ASEAN countries at the moment. It's already been approved. So next step is to be an ASEAN meeting venue standard. And also another good program is about sustainability. Okay, we also working to closely with TSEP for those hotels or meeting venues that are into this program. They're also giving you this uh, uh, template as well. Okay. TSEP also supporting the private sectors in providing virtual meeting, uh, webinar, which can go up to maximum of 10,000 persons. We have offline to online exhibition. Believe me or not, now today you don't have to go to the exhibition. You can do online exhibition with a real purchase online as well. An e-learning platform for upskill and reskill. These are the three big projects that TSEP is working on at the moment. When it comes to sales and marketing, we're going to be on the roadshows visiting uh, the potential countries uh, very soon in the next few months. But at the moment, we already come up with a very special package called Ease Up Package. This is not only for Bangkok, but for the whole of Thailand. If you book 20 rooms, you get 20 rooms for free. Okay, meaning like if the room rate is 5,000 baht, you pay 5,000 baht, 20 rooms, you get 20 complimentary rooms for free. But under one condition, you got to stay more than one night. Okay, you cannot stay just one night. You got to stay at least two nights or three nights. Okay. Uh, and also they're going to pay for, uh, DMC will pay for airport transfer. You pay for 20 person, another 20 persons will be free of charge. So we work closely hands in hands in order to help promoting mice to Thailand. Okay, so that's all I have for Bangkok. Thank you very much once again for your time. Thank you for being such a true friends of Thailand. And we really look forward to welcome you and your clients back to Thailand and to Bangkok again. Thank you. Thank you, Kun Prashin, for showing us really insights of Bangkok, the in, outside in and inside of Bangkok. I, I can fall in love with my hometown over and over again. And thank you for sharing us information about the MICE groups. And we will have time at the end to talk about this with, with um, the Q&A session, if you have questions about the MICE groups. And next, let me um, invite our important speaker from the most popular destination in the South, Kun Pumkit Raktangam. He's the president of Phuket Tourist Association. He will share us about the updates in Phuket. Please, well, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. And I try my best to uh, control my time because you have only uh, until like uh, one or 15 minutes and we have important speaker after me. Um, so what from Phuket, I, I, I probably, uh, ensure that you know Phuket very well. So I'm not going to talk much about the Po of the Young Man, about how beautiful we are today. But I'd like to update to you about the situations and why I, you know, updating to you, I have some very update pictures and some beautiful slides so that you can just show to you, it's just tantalizing you to just come back here uh, in very soon time. Of course, uh, Phuket has been ready to offer you the most unique experience as before. But uh, before I go into details how ready we are, I'd like to update to you about uh, COVID-19. And while I speak, uh, I'd like to show you some pictures as well so the admin can show some drone and pictures uh, while I'm speaking. Um, as of today, we have zero uh, infected uh, COVID-19 patients. And it's been like this for uh, 21 days already. So it's pretty fair to say that Phuket is very safe uh, destination for traveling. Um, the airport, the international airport has been reopened and for both domestic and international flights. Even the international flight is not permitted from the government, but we are ready for that and we expect to get international flights sometime later by August. Uh, currently, we have really, uh, very few domestic flights uh, flying only to Bangkok. We expect to get more domestic destinations coming up by mid of July. Um, hotels has been operating. Um, we have about, uh, not many now that actually operated, but we expect some international shared hotels with some um, villas uh, to start operating by mid July. Uh, the Phuket associations uh, as proposed to the prime minister on what we call Phuket motels. The bottom line is to ensure that the tourists, especially international traveler when they come to Phuket, 
they will have feel, uh, they, they, they feel more confident about traveling in Phuket. So we propose to the government to allowing the test on arrival. Uh, so international passengers who directly from international uh, countries uh, may uh, have uh, sorry may may have a test on arrival to make sure that. Uh, the tourists uh, has been safe from COVID-19 and you know can have uh, worry-free when they're traveling to Phuket. We have proposing the tracing applications to the tourists so the tourists can uh, ensure that uh, they have some uh, application that they can look on. And together we have um, uh, cooperation with the private and public sectors to ensure this safety, especially SCAT proposing what we call HSA, Safety and Health Administrations. The good news is uh, about 190 uh, tourism operators now in Phuket has been approved HSA. So far that I know, and many more, many more to come. So uh, I'd like you to remember these things. The SHA, we stand for Safety and Health Administrations. It's like a guideline for the new normal kind of service that you know the tourism in Phuket takes very seriously to deliver the uh, very high safety standard to other tourists. So uh, during the, the pandemic COVID-19 in, in Thailand, which is happening on uh, April and May, we have implemented the lockdown policies. Uh, as you can see, uh, many countries uh, uh, in the world actually implemented the lockdown measures. And it's proved successfully in Phuket because, as I mentioned to you earlier, that we have now zero infected cases. Uh, but during the lockdown, you know, we not allowing people to move in and out. Uh, the nature in Phuket has been restless, and now the beautiful beaches, uh, beautiful scenic in Phuket has been uh, recovered and reborn again. As Pumpashu mentioned, that many beaches in Thailand now has never seemed so beautiful as uh, before. So uh, I've been here for half of my life and I just realized how beautiful the beach in Phuket is much more beautiful than I ever ever experienced before. So uh, I'd like to make it short because I have a, 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 another speaker uh, coming up, but I'd like to mention a few things from now. Uh, first of all, uh, because we Thailand has been successfully proved on the controlling the pandemic COVID-19. So health and wellness in Thailand is a very emerging potential market for all of you. So including the medical tourism and wellness tourism. But Phuket, in addition, we have very cultural, as you see in the pictures, we have cultural tourism. Phuket has been nominated by UNESCO uh, as one of the creative cities on gastronomy, which proof that the food in Phuket is probably the most delicious uh, in the country. Sorry to say that, but it's the truth. Um, and in fact, the old town with the architectures that you can see in the picture has been very, very popular among tourism right now. And together, uh, sport tourism has been promoting a lot. Uh, so within the next few days, uh, when you're in your country, it's a, the, the pandemic situation has been under control and the government start to allow people to travel in again. So I think uh, you probably Phuket will be the most uh, perfect location for you to restart your life after the COVID pandemic. And I'd like to say that we are ready to welcome you all once again. We miss you. Don't you miss us? And look forward to seeing you very soon. Take care and well, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Kapun Kap. I miss Phuket as well and can't wait to go back to Phuket. And without further ado, we are running out of time, so I will invite the last speaker of the first hour. And he is from the east coast of Thailand, Pattaya City, Chonburi Province. Please welcome Kun Thane Suporn Sahat Rangsi. He is an acting president of Tourism Council of Chonburi Province and also Group Executive Director of Sunshine Hotels and Resorts in Pattaya. Swadikha. Uh, Over to you, Ka, Kun Thane. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to update about the situation in Pattaya and Chonburi. We have Utapau International Airport, which will be reopened by late of June, but only for the domestic flight to Chiang Mai only. Then about 20% of all hotels will be reopened by mid of July. 
as the government give the domestic package to stimulate the domestic travel. 40% of the tourist attraction will be opened by the July as well for the domestic market. All shopping malls are open but with shorter operating hours and also very restricted measure according to the HHA. 40% of the restaurants are reopened. Then I would like to update you about the hotels and new attraction in Pattaya and Chonburi. In Pattaya, now we have the deeper and bigger beach with the beach reclamation doing by the marine department. Then Amari Ocean Pattaya have two new wings. We have the new shopping mall called Terminal 21, the Gang Center Point Hotel, and the new show called Pattaya Dolphinarium. Then in Silacha, which mainly most of the expats live in this area, we have, we're gonna have the new Central Plaza Shopping Center within the mid of next year. Then we have the new Holiday Inn Express Hotel, uh, the new Novotel Marina Bay in Silosha, and Oakwood Hotel. Then next to Pattaya is the Chom Tien and Satahib. This area is very good and well known about the private beach without the road in between the beach and the properties. We will have the new Icon Siam shopping center within the next three years. New Mason Hotel, new Anna Anna Resort, New Pattaya Hotel, Papa Beach, and Tutu Beach Restaurant at the new Sky Garden at Nongnut Village. Also, as Pattaya and Chumburi is the part of the EEC or Eastern Economic Corridor, government try to upgrade and promote the infrastructure. Utapau Airport will be upgraded to be the third national airport and expected to be able to accommodate 50 million passengers a year within the next five years. Then we will have the new high speed, high speed train connecting from Don Mueang Airport, uh, Suwannukum Airport, and then to the Utapau. Then the last one will be the extension of the motorway from Pattaya to Makaputin Rayong or to Utapau. Next, I would like to talk about five phases of the tower recovery in Pattaya. In January, we first faced with the uh, cancellation of the Chinese market in late of January. And then in March, I think Russia is the last nation that's still towering by the end of March. All international tourists stopped coming to Thailand and I think it's all over the world. In June, it seemed that our Thai government be able to control the COVID-19. We don't have the new cases almost a month. And then in July, is the kickoff of the domestic travel, which the government and also the local tour operator in Pattaya, we try to do many packages to stimulate the domestic travel. Then for the international travel, we are not sure yet, but according to the recent update, we thought Russian might come back after New Year. Chinese might be able to start overseas trip by the next Chinese New Year, which is in February next year. And for European market, it might be the next summer in April or May. Then I would like to talk how Pattaya is ready to welcome all of you after the COVID-19 is gone. P stands for Pattaya is COVID free. We don't have the new case since 25th of April. A is assurance of the quarantine. Many hotels in Pattaya, in cooperation with the government, we do the state quarantine for those overseas Thai who come back from overseas. T is the things to do. We have many things to do like beach activity for kids, restaurant and bar entertainment and golf. Another T stands for tower with serenity. We can welcome almost all people either it's family, couples, or single, single towers. Another A is the accommodation, adapting with SHA guidelines. Y stands for your safety and our hygiene standard. Another A is we are adapting to the new normal. Then the way we how, how we gonna battle with the COVID-19, we have to adapt into three categories. First, adapting to the new normal, Secondly, focus on the cleanliness. And thirdly, how to train our staff 
to do everything in according to the HHA measurements. The new normal that all of us have to be adapt to. First, we need to communicate and display information to guests and to all the people using our facilities. Secondly, we do the temperature check and also provide the hand gels. Third is the social or physical distancing. Fourth is the using the taichana.com, which Kun Pachum already mentioned. The next one is for the food and beverage, we provide less buffet and live station and provide the set menu instead. And last one, encourage people to use digital payment rather than to use the bank note. The next picture will show the Pattaya Beach and the way how we do according to the new normal. We use drone to control the operation of the beach, uh, sunbed, this and that, to act according to the new normal. The next picture is the each hotel or each uh, travel operator in Pattaya, how we do according to char or according to the new new normal. Like we do the check-in, we do the cleanliness, this and that. Then the uh, HHA standard, I would like to be it into four categories. First, we control the waste management. Secondly, we do the sanitization, hand sanitizer and disinfectants. Very often. Then the training that we train our staff according to the safety standard. The S stands for social distancing, A awareness, F we use the face shield, mask and cough. E is the inquiry about staff well-being and touring history. And T stand for train to disinfect alias and Y yearning to help also the community. This the picture, the next picture will show how we manage the trash, the bin, how we have the diagram to show how to wash your hand in a step, how to prevent the COVID-19, how we ask our staff to do according to the new normal or according to the chart. With all the measures that I have talked and all the Pattaya operators have prepared, I hope once the COVID-19 is ended, we would be able to welcome all of you back again. Thank you and so much. Thank you, Kuntanet, for sharing us information about updates in Pattaya or Chonburi province, also my, the province where I grew up. Um, next, um, we will jump to the Q&A. Um, so thank you again for all well-respected speakers from four destinations. And now can the team bring all of them back to the screen? Um, just a note here that um, Kun Pumkit, uh, the president of tourists, Phuket Tourist Association, had to run to another webinar session. So he's not here with us in the Q&A session, but he said if you have questions for him, you leave in the Q&A box with your email address and he will contact you back for Phuket um, inquiries. And so now um, can the team upload the first question up, please? Right, is there a restriction to travel? Oh, okay, does every tourist have to register in the Thai Chanak platform once they arrive to Thailand? We Kun Prachum can answer this one since um, she mentioned it in her presentation. Kun Prachum, can you please answering this question? Maybe we cannot hear you now. Maybe you're muted. Can you please unmute? Oh, yes, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it, it's not compulsory. Okay, uh, you don't have to do it. It's your option. But we highly recommend that everyone that come to Thailand use this Thai Chana. Uh, you will see this QR code 
everywhere in Thailand, in every buildings, in every restaurants. That's only for your own benefit. So that just in case, for example, if someone in the restaurant got this infection, okay, and you just happen to be in the restaurant because this app can follow you, right? So if you just happen to be in the restaurant the same time, the same days, with the person who got this virus affected, then they know that, okay, you have to be on quarantine and you have to go into the hospital and check, you know, if you've got the virus or not. It's, it's for your own benefits, but it's not compulsory. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Um, so it's not compulsory, but we recommend you to download it for your own good yes. and safety. Okay. Yes. So let's jump to the next question, please. Now, this question is to Kun Lakyat. Um, is there restriction to travel to Chiang Mai? Is there 14 days quarantine for foreigners living in Thailand coming from another province? Kun Lakyat, can you please um, clarify and answering this question? Yes, thank you. Uh, quarantine is still in place, but there is an option for everyone to download the application from the Airport Authority of Thailand. So meaning that you have the uh, list of the application, fill up the form, we call CM1, and then just leave the airport and then give your references and then stay over a few nights and then you can fly back home safely. Thank you, Kunla. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? Um, I believe we have a lot of questions, but another set of um, panelists are waiting backstage right now since we are a bit late here. So um, for those of you who have questions, do leave in the Q&A box and put your email address there and we try to answer all your um, questions. Oh, here is, I think it's the last one for this session. So I would like to know if you have developed any new responsible tourism projects, attractions, areas or products. Thank you from Natalie. So maybe um, Kuntanet, can you answer this one? Um, responsible tourism projects in Tonbury? Uh, right now, I think many business have to act, you know, accordingly to the new normal. And then like Kun Pachum has mentioned, the beach and the national areas is back to, you know, nature like it was before. So everyone now have to do the business in the new way, do the less tourism products this and that so we we are doing accordingly thank you thank you Kuntanet. maybe could like you can add on this because there are a lot of um, responsible tourism attractions and um, even hotels and resorts in Chiang Mai yeah as you may know that uh, ecotourism and soft ecotourism in Chiang Mai is out throughout the city and then developing the product keep up the environment together with the attractions. So we are now, because of there is no business. So everywhere, everyone doing their job. So restart and get back to the new normal with our procedures. And then the product has been keep in place, developing. So that's all from, from, from Chiang Mai. Thank you. So Chiang Mai and Pattaya obviously are developing responsible tourism projects and attractions. And last destination here with us in the in the panel, Kun uh, Prachum, can you add on the responsible tourism part for Bangkok, please? Well, I think for Bangkok, um, you know, I, 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 I search a, a lot of information in Google and in meanwhile, during the past three months, if for those of you who, who are interested, you can you can log in and, and see there's a, a few uh, a website that open and introduce uh, new uh, local attraction or, or local experience. Uh, which I, you know, uh, as a Thai and who live in Bangkok, I have never seen such a place before, like New Market somewhere, which is about half an hour away from here, or uh, the, the bike tour that take you to some places, a hidden place that I have not seen, some tem beautiful temples in the cities. I think uh, with these three months that, that, that we, we were, you know, kind of freezing everything, 
uh, that's an opportunity. And I think the local agents or the local DMC has found a lot of new tourist attraction uh, and also new activities um, in the meantime. But also, I, I would like to touch base a little bit on, on uh, these attractions and products. I think because technology is coming in place now, and in the future, maybe like when you want to introduce new program to Thailand, in the past you have to fly, you know, 12 hours, 15 hours or six hours to Thailand to see the real product. Now maybe we can do virtual inspection with you. We can use the webcam or whatever, or even the iPhone and take you around to see. So you see it to build a confidence and you can see and you have more confidence before you come to see the actual Places. I think that is something that we we'll call a new normal. You know, when we have new products and new project in the future, uh, that that's uh, I I what I would like to add. And and to add on to that, as I said, you know, where everyone is is health conscious, and it, one of the responsibility tourism projects that not only the hotels but all the DMC is doing is to ensure that the safety and hygiene standard is there. Okay, um, I, my, if I may, uh, for example, um, in, 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 in my hotel, we instead of put fruits and flowers upon arrival, we have a care kit for you so you can bring it back home. And inside the care kit, we put sanitizer, we put hand gels, we put white tissues for you so, and, and mask so that you can keep it with you. And wherever you go, you can, you, you can have this care kit with you all over when you, when you travel. So this is something that I, I would call a responsible, you know, for, for, for the tourists uh, and that, that, that we would like to share with you. Thank you, Kun Prashim, for sharing us um, information on the responsible side of Bangkok. And we are sure that um, everywhere in Thailand, our provinces are working hard on the responsible tourism projects right now. Mm -hmm. And oh, we are out of time, so I have to say thank you very much for your time and for sharing your valuable insights and updates. And we really appreciate you being here with us. We have learned a lot about the four destinations, Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Pattaya and Phuket. And again, as I said, if you have questions for our speakers, we do, since we don't have time to answer all now, you can leave in the Q&A box and leave your email address there and we try to get back to you. All right, so thank you very much. And now we jump to the next session and we are now ready to start the back half of today's session focusing on the icon iconic beach paradise destinations of Thailand. Now I will why there's some transition in the backstage. So I recap that there will be four destinations here about to join us who are in the Peacewood Beach town in the northern south and it's three hours driving distance from Bangkok. Panga is a province where Kaulak is located, a neighboring province of Phuket. And there's gonna be an airport there soon. Grabi, which is famed for its breathtaking cask landscapes and island hopping activities. And lastly, Samui or Samui Island or Got Samui, the largest island in the Gulf of Thailand, the, the island of paradise. Okay, uh, speakers here with us. Okay, you may have to wait a little bit more. Okay, I see our first speaker with us today is from Hua Hin, our Hua Hin representative expert. I will invite him up. Please welcome Kun Udom Si Maha Shota. Kun Udom is the co-chairman of Environment, Thai Hotels Association and executive director of Bantale Da Resort in Hua Hin. And next speaker up is from Panga, Kun Supawi Kopet. Sadika. Kun Supawi is the vice president of Panga Tourism Association. Many of you might not have heard of Panga, but I'm sure most of you have heard of Kaulak. So Kaulak is a town in Panga province. And Thank next you. speaker is from Grabi, Kun Satsiton Kititon Kun. Sadiha. 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 Sadi
Krabi Tourism Association and she's here with us to share us all about this um, lovely beach destination in the south of Thailand. And the next and the last one is Kun Water Sit Pong Kampan. He's the president of Tourism Association of God Samui Group. Is he here with us? Okay. So while we are waiting for Kun um, Warris, it may have some technical error. So a reminder here, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box. On the notebook of PC, the Q&A icon is on the left. And if you're joining on mobile phone, it's on top of the screen. You can also vote for questions that you like in the Q&A box. Okay, it's Kun Tom with us. So, okay, so we will start with the first speaker then, Kun Udom Si Mahashota. He will share us all about the destination updates of Hua Hin province. So the floor is yours, Kun Dom, please go ahead. Hello, good morning and good afternoon for our TAT colleague. We have the opportunity to present the Paradise City in Hua Hin. In the past, Hua Hin is well known and is a summer place palette for our King Lama Seven. Currently, it's the weekend holiday for the Bangkok people spend time here. Hua Hin is located in south of Bangkok. It takes about three hours by car. We can get access to Hua Hin by car public bus from Bangkok or Suwanapum Airport. We also we have mini bus in the city of Van. And if the people would like to stay long in the travel longer, it may be take a train. It take about at least five hours from Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh, and you can learn the local experience during you sit in the train. Also, we have access by air. The air we can come from KL and to Ho Chi Minh. Only the one scheduled flight from Air Asia. Next slide, please. We will update tourist arrival in Ho Chi Minh. About 3.7 million people come to Ho Chi Minh. The market segment situation in Ho Chi Minh is about 70 percent, or 2.7 million, is from domestic or the Bangkok people or Thai people traveling, and. 25% from inbound tourism or 970,000 people. But the real new generate for the domestic is less than the inbound. Total Bohim and resort accommodation in Bohim is about 12,000 room. The average occupancy is about 60%. We will have a chance to extend more uh, tourists come in Bohim. If we can get 100% occupancy, it's really good for our city. The inbound tourists, uh, nearly 1 million currently came from the main major market, Scandinavian tourists, 25%, German market, 20%, and United Kingdom, 10%. And we got the Chinese market uh, start coming up nearly 10%. Another proportion is the uh, USA. Hong Kong, Japan, and also the AEC country. Because of the limited to asset to him, it can come only by car or by road. It's a major limited to asset from the inbound police. Next slide, please. We update the situation for the COVID-19 in Wuhan. It's a very good and get better, better during a two or three months ago. We did not have any infect case more than two and a half months. Since we have the case uh, in end of January, total case we got 17 cases and two people died and 15 people can recover and now no people in the hospital. After the government released the lockdown and have permit to accommodation for reopen again, since uh, May 18 last month, we allow for going and allow going across to provinces from Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh or to any else nearby Bangkok. Ho Chi Minh is the one that's
Association has recovered back very far for the tourist business. We have tourism from Bangkok, people traveling for holiday after the lockdown since uh, March 23rd from state of emergency announcement from the government. But all the private sector business and tourists should follow the standard of regulation of Department of Disease Control and Department of Health and Control. That both are under the Ministry of Public Health. Who in Municipality Office and Minister of Provincial Issue Who in HDC Platform. It's standby hygiene, the standby distancing, and C standby clean and clean. Are the criteria and the self assessment of the Thai stop COVID for getting the certificate. Also, we have developed a sustainable and environmental friendly destination in Ho Chi City too. We have many tourist business and accommodation getting the clean lift and clean hotel certification. Also, TAT and Department of Health have HHA certified safety and health and administration certification. This procedure and regulation for service quality implement in Ho Hin. We have a lot of uh, hotel and tourism business get the uh, approved from and certified from HHA too. Our area in Thailand to make sure that the domestic tourists will have confidence to traveling for their holiday in Ho Chi Minh. The loyal summer holiday palace that will be safe and hygiene in their place to stay and have a look. Also, we will keep the social distancing and control the carrying capacity not have for crowded place by using Thai China platform that generate from the Thai government. The people, when they are going to the place, they should scan Thai China platform too, so that in center or restaurant and hotel or like after COVID. Uh, next slide. Okay. After COVID, the lockdown, the COVID situation decreased. We will have the challenge and opportunity destination for both domestic and inbound market. The our strategy is the main uh, willingness and medical tourism for in destination. I think it's a really good way to uh, have the strategy for make the tourists come in for him. Family friendly beach and accommodation, long stay for retirement and active senior for general age. Holiday away from home about local experience and sustainable tourist in accommodation. Golfer challenging. We have more than 10 golf courts for him and Sha'am. You can pay allowed in every day when you stay in Wuhin. Another one is a challenge for the loyal coast project, Thailand Rivela investment and developing from fantastic decision for provincial traveling connecting. Petuli, Patok Kirikan, Sumpon, and Lanong. It's a big project from Omen Development, especially for family beach or Thai authentic beach. And long stay tourists from European country is the competitive advantage in working area. Next slide, please. We have the Tippen Tea make the attractive in Ho Hin to make the traveler have confidence and selected to stay at our loyal paradise. We have the tea walking street food market. Explore for more experience in local food, such as export in Ho Hin market, Nai market, and Tamarind market, and Sikada market. This is almost the open air uh, walking street, and you can select all the local food. Even you stay uh, many days in Ho Chi you can have the shopping mall for tourists shopping and spend more time and spend more money in our local community. We have market village, department store, Buport demands department store, and Ho Chi shopping mall. Also, to make sure that the tourists are the staying for long stay and willingness 
and medical tourism in our destination. We have the key excellent hospital care to build confidence to our where the customers stay safe and healed. We have a Ho Hin Hospital, San Paulo Hospital, and Bangkok Hospital. Next slide, please. Why Ho Hin? This is a very good question. Also, we have the tourist attraction and connecting pair to gaining more authentic and more fulfilling experience for getting more local and community experience. During the way from Bangkok to Hin, you will pass Maluka Taiwan Palace. Also, after you finish in Ho Hin, and you can go to further like what Kuai Mung Khon, the big statue, giant statue of the famous Mang, and Tao Chong Pacho, Wat Thong Sai Temple, Piyana Khon Cave. If you want the adventure, you can go hiking and see the Sam Loi Yacht National Park. Puibuli National Park to see the wildlife elephant in the Puibuli National Park and also Palau Waterfall in Kankata National Park and if you want uh, to swimming or school dive you can go to Kosu Island it takes about three hours from Bohin and you can stay one or two nights in Kosu Island and come back for stay in Bohin also next slide please Next slide. Hello. Hello. Next slide, please. Huh? Okay. Okay. I, I believe that this is the last slide. As last I'm slide. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <All> right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kun Udom, for showing us updates in Hua Hin. So let me correct myself. At the beginning, I said Hua Hin is a province. It's not a province. It's a town in the province called Prachuap Kirikan. Yeah, it's quite long. No wonder why we call it Hua Hin for short. So um, let me welcome the next speaker up. He, she's from the south of Thailand, near Phuket. And the province is called Kaolak, where uh, the province is called Panga, where Kaolak is located. Please welcome Kun Supawi Kopet, the Vice President of Panga Tourism Association. Turn ka. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, today, it's, I'm very exciting to be here today, and um, I would like to show you and our Panga at the moment. And I would like to say welcome to Panga. And first of all, I would like to update you some information of Panga in case you don't know where Kaolak or Panga is. Panga is located in the shore of the Andaman Sea in the southern part of Thailand. You can fly to Phuket International Airport and you take a taxi one and a half dri hour drive up north to Kaolak, Panga. And we have three famous islands, as you may know, James Bond Island, Similan Island, and Surin Islands. In Panga province, we have lots of national park and marvelous of natural resources. So you can, a part of the 20 kilometers long beach, we have mountain, we have waterfalls, and a lot of land discovery. And as you know, Kaolak is the heart of tourist destination. And Panga is calm place, peaceful place, so Customers who are seeking for peaceful holiday for relaxation, Panga is the right choice for you. So I would like to update a little bit more about Panga Main Market. Panga Main, main Market, as you can see in the graph, you will see that our top five international source market is number one, Germany, number two, China, number three, Australia, number four, Russia, and number five, France. And when we see in the Panga visitor arrivals, in terms of number of the tourists, you can see that from 2017 until 2019, that means three years now, our number is stable. So 20 per, uh, 70 per, 71% is from international tourists and 29% is from domestic tourists. However, if you comparing with the room night stay, for domestic traveler, they always stay average length of stay around one or two nights. But uh, international travelers stay in Panga province around eight to 10 nights. 
So when we compare with 100% occupancy of tourists in Panga or Kaolak destination, it means that 90% of tourists is come from international market and only 10% is come from domestic market. That wise, Kaolak is really lean on international market. And I would like to update about COVID situations and hotel updates. The hotel is closed from 4 April until 4 May according to the command of the government. However, we start to reopening again, but from May and June, it still have 14 days quarantine. So that's, that's why the hotel still closed and also the Phuket airport still closed. But at the moment, now we allow to travel to to other destination in Thailand with, uh, without the self quarantine. That's why there is around 10 hotels out of 120 hotels in Panga, starting to open from 1st of July onwards to accept domestic travelers. And according to Panga province, we are much lean on international market and mainly guests is from European market. That's why we make the rest of the hotel still waiting and they predict to open in September or October onwards, according to the on-hand bookings. And we are still hoping that uh, the travelers from all around the world can travel to Thailand very soon. And recently, we have a ban of NT to Panga also, which is valid until 30 May last, last month. It means that Panga is really take serious about COVID-19 for safety, for health and safety. That makes our province is very safe to travel. Panga have lived for beach reopened on the 1st of June and other main extract attraction is reopened is Jam Bonds Island will open on the 1st of July, but Similan Islands and Surin Island still waiting. And I think it will be opening in October, like the same of every year. And at the same time, it's the good news that Phuket International Airport is open already from 13 June onwards, both domestic uh, terminal and international terminal, and we did with schedule flight from Bangkok. And in Panga province, we have only two cases of coronavirus confirmed in Panga, and we are all recovered since 27 April. So that means. It following like uh, 53 consecutive days already that we don't have any COVID file in Panga as of today. So that means we are very safe to travel. And this is the reason why the official of Panga have been confirmed that our order of Panga has been in, in the 1st of June. And are we ready? Are we ready for new normal? Yes, and Panga is ready for new normal because now it's new normal for all travel industry in Thailand. Panga Tourism Association also follow Sha. Amazing Thailand Safety and Health Administration with the logo. At the moment in, in Panga province, we have two hotels that received Sha certificate already, but other hotels still on process of application and also waiting for certify. And spa wellness at hotel must apply both Sha and also Ministry of Public Health certificate. That means that we have two certificates from Cha Amazing Taran Rocho and another one is from the government. Once you register, they will have a staff to recheck if the, if the spa is meet the standard or not because spa is the uh, is the, the business that is the high touch for, for the guests and when customer coming to Thailand, everyone love massage and I know. And this certificate for Cha in, is apply including restaurant to company and other transportation. So this is an example of the new normal that the hotel do. Next slide. So we clean our touch point area really often and we spray the sanitizer in public area and in the room also after the guest check out and before guests check out. And we check temperature, both the staff and also customer when arrival and hand gel provided in our public area, social distancing like 
um, other states also. And this is the, the standard that we follow by CHA. So CHA will have every department of the hotel that you have to follow. So this is the end of my inf uh, information from Panga that I will update to you. If you have any questions or you need to know more about Kaulak Panga, please feel free to reach me by email, my mobile phone or like official so you can just add me. Thank you very much for today and I'm really waiting to welcome you all again. Thank you very much for sharing updates and very useful information measurements that implemented in Panga or Kaulak. And next, I would like to welcome um, the expert, she is the president of Grabi Tourism Association, Kun Satsiton Kititon Kun. Okay, um, thank you TAT for giving me uh, the opportunity to be here today and all the updates that I would like to share with you in Grubby is that we have zero new case, uh, no new infected case uh, for 50 days from May the 1st and we do not impose on water restrictions for traveling within the country for those who are already in Thailand can travel to Gerbi freely and there is no other requirement. Quarantine will not be imposed and transportation by air as there is no international flight allowed until at least the end of June. Gerbi International Airport provides service to passengers from domestic flight on the route from uh, Gerbi to Bangkok only. And as for traveling by sea, entering Grabi from outside the region is not yet allowed. So that means sea transportation is only allowed within the boundary water of Grabi. And the major tourist attractions and destinations in Grabi, such as PP Island and the islands nearby, are under supervision of marine national parks and this remain closed until further notice, as well as the, uh, the, the famous ones like Hong Island, Top Island, Chicken Island, um, Telewak, all remain closed until further notice as well. That means we cannot do anything much about sea activities. But anyway, the attraction that you can visit all year round in Grubi are community based where you can see the local characteristics of way of life, local leisure activities, fishing communities and hot springs for health and wellness. And one of the most famous environmentally friendly activities that visitors can do all year round is kayaking in a mango forest. You can see all the lush and greenness in Grubby there. And uh, Landa Island National Park is now fully reopened, so you can come and visit us. As for our PP Island, uh, the part that is called PP Dawn, where there are hotels, accommodations, and communities and now open for residents and visitors to travel, but only from uh, from the mainland of Grubby. And there is no other access allowed yet. And businesses are preparing to reopen, but the major tourist attractions, as I mentioned earlier, still remain closed until further notice. So we hope to hear good news soon. And Grubby is one of the main uh, tourist destinations uh, of Thailand. And now on behalf of Grubby representative, I would like to share a video clip of what you can do and where you can go in Grubby for the time being. Please enjoy the clip.
Ah, yes. And in accordance with safety and health concerns, in Gobi, we do have a laboratory testing for COVID in human, which can get the result within four hours. And um, many hotels, tra travel agents, restaurants, and those in tourism sectors are gradually preparing to reopen their businesses in preserving health, safety, and security. We also have a trial a drill for welcoming tourist arrivals. The drill was for the new normal tourist reception system who come to Gobi to be ready in all aspects and what to do when they get off the plane, going on the bus or taxis or hotels van, what to do when entering the restaurants, getting into the pool using the spa service. So the drill is like a model regulations for all hotel accommodations in Gobi province. And at the present time, there are 30 establishments received hygiene safety standards amazing talent safety and health or the SHA and there are still many more under consideration to be certified and in preparation for the reopening various establishments including tourist spots have been doing big cleaning continuously both on land and under the water and on behalf of the hospitality industry, we are keen to welcome and enhance the quality of the experience by visitors on the basis of safety. When it is safe to travel, we hope that Gobi will be one of your top destinations on your bucket list. Come to enrich your personal experiences with us and the appreciation of nature, the local society, and the culture here in Grubby with us. Thank you, and take good care of yourself. Sawadee kha. I really like your background, really colorful of Grubby. And thank you for sharing this information in also videos and um, remind me that I really need to have a beach holiday soon. Okay, and next and the last speaker of today is from Gotsamui, the island of paradise. Please welcome Kun Warasit Pong Kampan. He is the president of Tourism Association of Gotsamui. Sawadee Good morning. Okay. I think I think this is morning in dealing time in Europe and and Swadi Club. Uh, my name is Tom, uh, president of Tourism Association of Kotsunui, and another half is the vice president of Nora Group. So before we're going to uh, before we're going to have um update Kotsunui Thailand, I would like to uh, enjoy with our virtual videos and of course that's show by me just about one and 1.20 second. And after that, we're going to be updated once again. Good evening, welcome to Koh Samui. I'm standing here in Koh Samui. Samui is the first largest island in Thailand, followed by Phuket, Koh Chang, and Samui. Measuring 247 square kilometers, and it placed the middle of the Gulf of Thailand. Samui Island is very well known in the Coconut Island and very easy to connect to with this traveling from mainland Sulatani by train, car from Bangkok and low cost airline to Sulatani airport and take a few minutes to connect the catamaran speedboat and take a ferry to Donsak Pier in one and a half hours. Anyway, highly recommended to take a direct flight from Bangkok to Subway Airport, which is take one hour flights operating every an hour from Bangkok Airways. Kosamui is surrounded by the island, a small island like uh, Konang Yuan, Ang Tong Merlins, Koh Tao, and Koh Phangan. Very easy access and take one day to go around this island. And after that, in the nighttime, Subway we have a lot of restaurant and bar we can serve you all the drink and party and everything you want so please come over to Kosamui to have a nightlife in Kosamui after the day tour from Sulawesi Island today Kosamui is in wars is in the light on destination for tourists around the world 
with white and soft sandy beaches and natural beauty surrounding. I wish you to have a good healthy without COVID-19 and looking forward to welcoming you to Kosmui with the new normal style by wear mesh and physical distancing. สวัสดีครับ. Yes, I do hope everyone will be enjoyed with our video intro by me. I spent a very long day that day to our shooting the videos. So um Cosmoe is is really difficult to do the drone because it's the our airport is in town or just just can go to everywhere in five minutes. Uh, I mean I'm in the Sunwe airport. So that's why they do not allow the drone to take a shoot, you know? Um, and now we take this opportunity in COVID-19 pandemic. So then we we would take a drone up up on the sky and then just 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 taking shot. Very nice shot for you guys. And um, you know that oh, this is very nice, uh, nice drone uh, filming. So that's why I'm telling you that is COVID is is our uh, COVID maybe that is very scary to everyone, but it sometimes is make everything happen. You know we don't have uh, any tourists coming in during this time, but we have for uh, the turtles. You know we have 50 turtles. We, we have 15 turtle sea turtle. Our nest has been found on the beach in Kosimui and bringing a hundred of, of eggs. And believe me, that is, uh, they are going to um, the beach size of the hotel six star Banyan tree. So I think they know how, how comfortable for uh, uh, to stay in, in, in the six star hotels. And what is what is the uh, the governor in 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 Cosmo doing uh, for uh, a screening point screening point are uh, trying to um, quarantines trying to quarantine the passenger through our ferry and to the airport so we we found nothing 69 days wow excellent number 69 days until yesterday uh, we have no covid we have no COVID, but we have the turtles coming uh, in threat of the COVID. So that's that's because of we have a skinning point by we use the application called Samui Health Plus uh, application to screening point for arrival to go Samui. Very easy to do it by your registration. And after that, you are going to check in at the, the airport in Suvarnabhumi airport and then you're going to Samui and pass by our QR code. The QR code will stand in you by yellow, green, red. If you have uh, the green colors, you will be entered without uh, without uh, strictly uh, screening. But it have to, if you have to be the yellow one, so the yellow will be like, you have to uh, stay in the hotels and what we have is now we have call we call volunteer in the hotels volunteer in the hotel we are check you in the link uh, to stay in 14 day or whatever to stay in seven day or 10 day by the way we are not not stuck you 14 days in dealing you are uh, traveling to Cosmo in this time until until we have um international flight going to Thailand, then we have to be at just how to screening uh, more chopper or more strictly to get into Kosamui. So, so now Kosamui is very beautiful with the natures. You look at the uh, how 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 to get to Kosamui now. So far, I would like to update you. We have ten flight from Bangkok from Don Mueang Airport to Suratani by low cost ally and you just take a Tamalan one hours and you have to or take my car going to Don Sakpir to take one and a half hour going to Smui. And of course that we have direct flight from Bangkok Airway. Now on they resume the flight for five flight per day. They are using the ATR 72 and uh, tomorrow they will be start to have our uh, 
the Airbus 319 will be will be flight once per day to Gosamui. So far, the fully they have full operatings with 15 times round trip from Donsak to Sumui, Sumui to Donsak. As well as Rompaya, they also have the speedboat one time per day. And also Lasha Furley as well, they will be have 15 times. Someday they have uh, too many cars that will be increased to 17 times per day. This is made like, this is a normal already. But the passenger is still lower than, than last year. We found, we found about 3,500 person entering by Furley to Gotsimui. And, and load factor for Bangkok Airways so far now on 5.5, five. load factor going to very high, 95%. We do hope Bangkok Airways will be, be increased to flights later on uh, in, September, um, in uh, July. I'm just talking about uh, the hotels now on. The hotel now on is open in June, about 60 hotels. And we found, we found in August, they will be open again, 92 hotels. We have 60,000 60, rooms and a uh, uh, 30,000 room night. And we have 650 hotels. And now they will be open in June, about 10%. And increase will be in July, in about 15%. Uh, until we got update from uh, policies of the, the government. So we will be keep talking with the uh, Bangkok Airways to increase the flight. Normally, um, they have allowed flight 52 flight per day from Bangkok Airways. Um, and we do hope that, um, you know, I mean, the COVID-19 will stay with us for long, I think maybe next year. But the travel bubbles should be a start very soon and we do hope and finger crossed to everyone that is um, a lot of people they are still keep keep the booking in the hotel without cancellation they said that they have a chance to go into Kosamui. they will go right away that's that's why some of the bookings still keep on in in bangkok airways so far, they they do not have cancellation until they have um they have a cut off date or something like that. So, some of you very 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 are uh, must ready to to welcome all of you here, because because as we quite realistically with the seventy uh, days without COVID nineteen. So I would like to welcome all you guys to come in here as well. We have. We do like T-step transition step one. That is mean like the normal day. That is the COVID nineteen pandemic. But well, uh, welcome step two. That we trying to do the system of the new normal. That that's that's why we have SHHR. That everyone keep talk to you already. Shah is now we have the committee to uh, to screening all the hotel operations. Um, to site inspection with the committees to verify that they they passed and get the certificate later on. The stating two, we do the PR, public relation and marketing. Uh, that's why on the third until the fifth of July we have Thai travel Thai in our Central our Central World. We 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 do have a twenty like twenties. Uh, it as a uh, private sector will be joining us and trying to give you very good package for Thai, Thai people first until until you guys ready to come over to Thailand. And of course, that is crisis plan. If we have um, uh, the pageants, a lot of people, they got the COVID-19 pandemic, more than five or 10 people, we, we have the crisis plans in Gotsamui hospitals. We have the threat, we have the state uh, quarantine and local quarantine as well. Of course, that food exit state three. Of course, that food exit state three. We waiting until we have a vaccine. And very green light to on over the aircraft to fly over to Bangkok normally. 
and of course that is we we have to be like you know wait for long long time in about years ago so that's why now on we have screening point very strictly if you have to if you look at this upper charge that is we will our screening point from from the uh, the airport i mean the swanapoop airport on the ferry and then get to green colors yellow color and red colors and do very strictly to our pet check in and check out to taxi as well and track and trace to anyone if we have any emergency case happen so this is this is very important for uh, the passenger they would like to uh, traveling to Gosumui or Thailand the safety and healthy that is more that are more important to all and we don't want we don't want to get involved much about the government policy how when to get the passenger back to thailand but i i do hope everyone and all the all, all the partnership like tour operators and all attendants if you are ready to come to kosamui please welcome i will be I will be submit you on my personally as well. Thank you for um, thank you for joining with this class, and then we do hope that everyone will be enjoy and and moreover, we we make your trust, we make your confident to traveling to Thailand. Travel agent who you you know that are uh, I know that a lot of travel agent they. They're trying, they're trying, and they are ready to sell Thailand for the population, Iceland, like uh, uh, Phuket, Koh Chang, Pattaya, Kabi, whatever, Koh Phangan, Koh Tao, and Koh Samui. However, wherever you want to go into Thailand, please welcome. And thank you very much for you joining us and Patio to see me in this session. Thank you very much, Kap. So, Adi Kap. Thank you, Kun Borosit, Kun Tom. It's a nickname in the industry for showing us about Samui, the island of paradise that I call it, and the news about turtles, our new friends to the island. I can't wait to go meet them all. And now, please stay with us for the next 15 minutes, and we are opening the floor now for the Q&A. So for those of you who have not submitted the questions, please be sure to type them into the Q&A box. You can also vote for questions that you like here as well. And now, without further ado, please welcome our speakers back on the screen to start the Q&A session. All right, it looks like we have some questions, so um, let's see what the first question is. So, is there a limit to the number of tourists at attractions? Um, so, this question will be for everyone starting from Hohin, um, Kunudom. Okay, we answer is the, the limited number of tourists in the attraction in Wuhin, we not have any limited of the tourists. And we, all the attraction area, uh, we will use the Taishana for scan QR code if it's uh, really hard for the tourists, the people, the Soviet. Uh, people will ask the tourists for queuing and waiting for the uh, finish the attraction and cut going out even in the department store or the restaurant also i think it's a uh, it's a uh, do everything everywhere in thailand even in bangkok or in Wuhin. and uh, we is very really lucky that Wuhin we not have a uh, state quarantine for 14 days for the tourists and we open every tourist will come to stay in Wuhin. Thank you. Okay, and next let's go to the next nation of Panga. So is there a, li a limit of number of tourists? Uh, sorry, actually for Similan Islands, we all already control the limit of the tourists to visit Similan Islands last year because the 
the big amount of the numbers of visitors who visit Simlan Island. But this year, the, the number will be smaller at the moment that they talk. But for other attractions like Surin Island and another islands, also local attraction, we don't have the limited yet because only small numbers of the tourists go in there. But I think, I believe that in the future, they will have the limited of tourists who can get in the each attraction for health and safety also. Thank you. And Kun Sasiton, can you please um, answer to this question for the Krabi site? Yes, there is. It will be, um, there is a limitation number of visitors in a particular place, especially like outdoor and indoor for the outdoor, um, for the space of four square per one person. So you have to calculate with that, but indoor is going to be five uh, square meters per one person. And also the event is going to be limited number of um, visitors and participants of no more than 50 people for the one event, yes. And other uh, attractions depending on the space, so they have to calculate according to the uh, what I mentioned earlier, yes. Thank you, so Grubby has really strong measurements on this. Um, let's move to the next destination, Samui. Um, Tom, Pikun Tom. Yes, um, yes. Next, yes. Well, yeah. Yes, um, so far we, we are screening by Bangkok Airway already is that is now we have we have only 52 flights per day allowed to fly. So and all the people were going to Pangan are uh, Pangan and Tong and got all to got down, you know, and we, we, we don't have any remitted of the passenger will be staying. We all welcome now on uh, whatever you you love got Samui or you love got Tao or you love got Peng and uh, all most welcome all of you here. Even uh, you will come on 10,000 person uh, because it's, we have surrounding island and I say it, uh, everyone can go by prefer island that they want. So it mean we are not limit uh, the number of tourists for attraction as well. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, there's a limit in some attractions and um, destinations. So let's um, move to the next question. So Dika, post COVID-19, will you be implementing social distancing in your properties? Will you go for limited or full capacity operations? So I'll, I'll let everyone answer. So we'll start with um, Kunudom for him. Yes, uh, I think the, we implement that follow the regulation like a uh, char or tie stop COVID. We do the distancing and uh, for our property, but uh, if like a resort, we have an open area and more space. I think the tourists can walk in and talk, uh, swimming and uh, walking on the beach. Like a swimming pool, we will limit it's only the five to eight people in the 150 square meter of the swimming pool. This was for the social distancing. And the restaurant, uh, we allow, if they came with the same family, or uh, stay in the same room, there are three or four people, you can sit in the same table. That uh, now all the government already allow uh, to review the distancing because last month, when you sit in the restaurant, you can come with the family, you can separate table to have the eating and uh, in the restaurant, but now they allow to stay together. I think uh, for the further, for the limited the full capacity of population, I think uh, the hotel is no problem because they decide for the room and occupancy belong to the space. But in the public area, somewhere that we, the earlier question that in the attraction tourist, uh, in the market, night market, or in the uh, open air market, they limit the people for scanning and use the QR code for check with the custody at the limited. Okay. Thank you, Kunudam. So move to Panga about social distancing in in um, hotels or resorts properties in Panga. Kun Pra, can you please help us? Yes. Uh, in Panga, actually, we also implement also 
according to child certificate. And yes, we will do social distancing in property in our public area. And when you access to the restaurant, we also set aside the table like one and a half meters away for, for each family. And also the hotel will have the spa and wellness. We will like uh, eat in one round, we allow only one person for one room first at the moment. So we have a step and followed by the Ministry of Public Health of Thailand also. This is the, the starting way that our the hotel who will start reopen the hotel at, at the moment from 1st of July onwards. But however, if it's long time already and the vaccine is out and everything is back to normal, I think everything will be like will be less for social distancing and limited of the capacity. Thank you. So let's move to Krabi. So will there be limited or full capacity operations for properties, hotels and resources in Krabi? Yes, we do have safety measures with the very strictly enforced in especially like in public areas and well actually both in establishments in public areas and so uh, when you go out you need to wear a face mask uh, maintain social distancing and limit number of customers or visitor or particip participants uh, that is strictly enforced and visitors will be asked to scan the Thai Shana or Ma Shana application. And um, if you go to somewhere like in the park, and um, if it's kind of over capacity, you have to wait. So it's like um, we, uh, we recommend you to make an online reservation or you can call, make a phone call to check if, um, if, they, if the place is fully booked or not, yes. Thank you, Kun Gaya, Kun Sasitan. And next, let's move to Samui, the last destination. So, would there be social distancing or um, limited on capacity operations? Kun Tom? Yes, uh, we are quite really lucky that uh, as Samui is there are small islands and we call districts. You know, we are not uh, not a province. So, that's why we are co coordinated with, well, coordinated with the, uh, the mayors mayor of Kosamui and also are the chairlift of Kosamui as well as we are coordinate with the TAT um, Samui office and we we have very 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 good um privacy by we trying to have the committee to check every hotel you know to to follow by HHA as we said or even we are uh, add up something something uh trying to be um uh trying to be have like you know um trying to be sued for uh, any hotels of course Samui. it's not only follow up by sha only sometimes sometimes some things like we we need to add up we need to more advanced to make is a uh, customer to be trashed so we fill up later on we have a teams already we assigned a team with 19 team to do our with site inspection for HHA and also have our PHA as well. Thank you, Kun Tom. So all destinations here, obviously, that um, the social distancing is implemented and um, there's limitation, but the SHA is uh, um, the project that help elevate the standards and, and now all destinations and all properties are you know, working with the SHA and I hope that it will help when the international tourists come back to make them confident, you know, traveling within Thailand. And next, uh, let's move to the, the question number three. Wearing of masks is required even at beach destination, is it? Or so long a tourist is out on the street will require to put on mask? Okay. So, Kut Udom, do we need to wear a mask on the beach? Okay. It's a very good question. <laughs> uh, if we're talking about dealing, we have the infection uh, two, or three, two or three months ago. The poor men in Hohin province, they announced that if the people walking on the beach, we should wear the face mask. But right now, uh, when the, all the lockdown is released and we have not had any infect case, 
more than two and a half months. Since the last month in May 18, they are now for reopen the accommodation and all the tourist business. They allow the people to no need to wear the mask and walking in the beach. But they ask the people or tourists to consider about distancing and not do any the group or the target together in the beach. Like uh, if you heard that some area, they have the people, like younger people sitting together, have some drinking and eating, and they said it's not allowed that we should do the distancing. That's now how we have released and locked down and some the regulation of no need to wear the mask. But if you walking in the hotel or in the state, we need to wear the mask. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So walking on the beach, we might not need to wear a mask. It's not enforced, you know. But make sure to keep distance. Yeah. All right. Next, um, let's go to Panga. Uh, yes. I believe that after post COVID. The tourists, when they come to the destination, will be less than before when they start coming back. That means the beach will not have a plenty of tourists on the beach. Actually, uh, the government required to wear masks everywhere you go. But if you go to the beach, I think the beach in Kaulak and Hanga will be enough for you all with the distancing. So I think it's the new normal of the luxury stay in in on the beach and I suggest also if you go to the market or go to outside the hotels or any attractions however I think it's necessary to wear the mask at the moment before we get the vaccine and we keep it social distancing ha. Uh, thank you Kun Pre. so similarly to Kun Udom from Ho Hin so let's move to Krabi in Korea, yes. Um, actually, strictly enforced uh, everywhere when you go out to the public areas. But if you do keep social distancing, so physical distancing, so it doesn't really matter because uh, when when we do some exercising, is uh, is it was recommended, is right, not to wear a mask. But you need to keep social distancing. That's the only thing that you need to concern about. Yes. So you don't need to wear a mask on the beach uh, as long as you stay away from your friends? Or? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, when you go out to the public area, it is the must in Grubby, okay? You need to wear a mask. But of course, when you go, if you have social distancing, just like when you go to the restaurant and you have to eat, you have to have a meal, right? And so you can take off the mask. but. Still, you have to keep social distancing, but if you keep on uh, doing social distancing, then it is fine to take off your mask. Yes. Thank you. Um, Kuntam, Samui? Yes, I, I don't think, I don't think the beach is not very clouded. And, and, and you, you just have to thinking about that there were bikinis, very less bikinis, and there are swimming, pool, uh, swimming suit. <laughs> <laughs> and they are still wear masks. It's not consistency. Um, I, 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 I agree to not wear masks on the beach, but on the public area, you should wear masks. We we have to enforce the, them to wear masks in in public area, because because of um, you know, we are not like a uh, Bondi or we are not like uh, any anywhere else that is the very clouded beach. So that's why I think, yes, yeah, social distancing is help very much. And it seems to be that when you are wearing bikini, that is wear mask. It, 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 um, um, I, are you? Are you? Everyone is agree with me. So I think we don't wear mask on the beach. You know? Yes, I agree that we should we, we don't have to wear a mask on the beach, you know, just in case we forget and go in the sea and swim with mask. That's not very cool, isn't it? All right. We have, um, so in summary, okay, there is no need to wear a mask on the beach, but you should wear a mask in public spaces, uh, public areas, like walking streets or markets or shopping malls, okay? Right, let's um, go to the next question, please. 
sustainable. Sustainable community-based tourism and luxury lifestyle products will be part of new normal. What updates are there from your destination? So one by one again, I will start with Kun Udom. For him. Yes, uh, for the CBT, I think uh, we have the new normal for doing by follow the HHA criteria also. And I think uh, the decision that in Wuhin, they have the local accommodation for traveler or uh, the CBT. Uh, I think the people get training from the local government now and they are aware and how we do the lifestyle and to follow the HHA and uh, Thai stop COVID. That is the way that uh, we should do in the new normal of the CBT tourists. Okay. Thank you. So, love CBT sustainable are implemented in Hohin. And next, let's move to Panga Kaulak. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, that after COVID, there will be less tourists coming to our destination. That that means the new normal. When, when you travel and you let, have less people in the properties or in the destination, it makes you feel more luxury. Like this place is belong to you, and also. This is the reason why it will affect that the destination and the attraction can develop the long term of sustainable tourism strategy also because less tourism is the key to to get the quality tourists uh, uh, to a destination something like that <laughs> to, to to maintain the quality uh, tourists to our destination and we can make the sustainable tourism. Ha. Thank you, Kun Pray. Um, just um, uh, a question um, directly to you about the yes. airport, Panga. Maybe you can answer that in short, the update about yes. the airport that might happen in Panga. Uh, from the latest update that they announced, uh, the, they, will, should, they should be finished in 2024 or 2025 as the, the exact plan, the first plan. But however, when COVID come here, I, I don't know that it may take longer, a little bit longer, I think. So we can wait around like four or five years for now, but I'm not sure that it will be a little bit later or not. I'm not so sure. Thank you. Huh. So let's say five years from now, there will be an airport, but we'll keep yes. updated and see, you know, the, the plan in the future. All right. right, so let's jump to Krabi for the, the same question, sustainable commodity-based tourism and luxury lifestyle products. Okay, thank you for the questions. I've been waiting for answering this because since I mentioned earlier that all the main attractions in Krabi are under supervision of Marine Park and that all remain closed. So we have to get the, uh, a new destination for tourists and we have many, many uh, community-based tourism events uh, where you can visit all year round. Uh, you can do the fishing community and you can do kayaking at the sport water, a water sport, and you can also do some um, a place to feed various sea animals, and um, where you can see um, sea grass. You can also do uh, enjoy the the local life and all the uh, local characteristics way of life, and and the the hot springs also is the we we have right now we have a couple of. Uh, communities that you can come and visit. Yes. Thank you. So Krabi is also famous for um, community-based tourism and, and sustainable tourism. Yeah. Okay, let's um, move to the last destination, Samui. Kun Tom, Kun Tom is waiting. Yes. Yes, I'm smiling because of a lot of uh, <laughs> tour operators just take me. Uh, how about no mask and 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 no okay. bikinis? How how you select it? <laughs> So um, I'm laughing. Yeah, they have too many people. Just take me. Um, well, uh, very. Um, they they are missed me very much. That's why they are just asking me a lot of things. Of course, that's sustainable. That we are start for ten years already. We we have the Clean Island Foundation. Um, we start to have low low carbon, 
And last year we do uh, say no to plastic uh, before the government's um, running, uh, the, running with the say no to plastic, but we, we did for a long, long, long time already. Um, and and now on you see that is we have our sea, our sea turtles have been uh, spot laying eggs on the beach. And um, it's what report are um, on last week that is the turtle had the flock to lamb saw beach. So now on our now on the nature has come over to Kosamui. Nature with the beauties it's come to Kosamui. On the sustainables, even now on we have the communities, uh, communities marketing, communities based and communities homestay. We I I have uh, I just have attended to meeting with them trying to do sustainable committees. We have a lot of things changed, the climate change in Kosamui as well. And now on, of course, that we are we are screen, screening by by the airport that we have owned by uh, private sectors. And of course, that they are screening the passengers who have luxury and they, they prefer the less possibilities, tourism, that is now on. We're trying to be adding up sustainable to less possibility tourism that is one of the uh, uh, one of the policy of tat trying to have announced to own their uh, tourism industry so so far this is very very valuable if you if you still selling the natures the, the nature will be destroyed and you know trying to be down and down and now i'm trying to do low carbon green islands and trying to supporting anything about the natural so i think i think everywhere everywhere of the tour destination in thailand will be increasing so of the the passenger will have a quality and luxury uh passenger will come to thailand yes thank you kun chom for answering the question so all these four destinations um, have practiced um, sustainable tourism and Samui has really launched a zero plastic um, island campaign and that's a good start and now we are out of time and a bit late 20 minutes late here so I must say thank you to all our speakers today for sharing such useful information about the situation on the ground in their destinations or eight destinations Ho Hing, Panga, Garbi, Samui, Chiang Mai, Bangkok, Pattaya and Phuket and thank you our audience and partners and travel agents out there for joining us today it's over 1000 of you joining us today and we are very happy for you to being part of this insightful and timely webinar and we all hope that our industry will bounce back as quickly as possible and we can't wait to see you all in thailand with your help selling thailand of course i'm confident we can do this together and make our industry bounce back and stronger ever and we have more interesting webinar sessions